Welcome, welcome back to REC, where we talk all things audio production and sound. We are continuing our series, but how does it work? With the condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are revered in professional audio settings for their ability to capture sound with remarkable sensitivity and accuracy. In this video, we're delving into the intricate technical details of condenser microphones, exploring how they function, the role of each component in the signal chain, and how to interpret a frequency response graph. We'll also discuss three classic condenser microphones microphones, each tailored to different vocal types. Hi, I'm Diana Everett. I'm a singer-songwriter producer and RAC grad. Let's go. First, let's overview the technical components, diaphragm and backplate. The diaphragm is a thin conductive membrane that vibrates in response to sound waves. Typically made from lightweight material like mylar, it is coated with a conductive material. The diaphragm works in conjunction with a fixed backplate, forming an electrostatic capacitor. If you don't know what a capacitor is, we've done a video on electronic components components, so go check that out. As sound waves hit the diaphragm, it moves, changing the distance between it and the back plate. Capacitor. The capacitor is crucial to the operation of a condenser microphone. When sound waves cause the diaphragm to vibrate, the changes in capacitance result in an electrical charge that mirrors the characteristics of the sound wave. This allows the microphone to capture the nuances in sound, making it highly effective for detailed recording. Preamp circuit. The electrical signal generated by the diaphragm is is initially very weak, often in the millivolt range. A preamp circuit amplifies a signal to a level suitable for further processing or recording. This amplification is vital, as it allows the signal to be sent to mixing consoles, audio interfaces, without losing fidelity. High quality preamps can enhance the overall sound, adding warmth and richness to the audio. Unlike dynamic microphones, condenser microphones require a power source to function. This power is usually provided through 48 volt phantom power, provided by audio interfaces, mixing consoles, or dedicated power supplies. You'll find often as you go up into higher quality microphones, they'll usually have their own designated power supply. This power not only energizes the preamp, but also maintains the charge on the diaphragm, allowing it to function properly and capture sound accurately. All right, so let's go over the process of the signal conversion. The conversion of sound into an electrical signal in a condenser microphone primarily hinges on the interaction between the diaphragm and the back plate. As sound waves strike the diaphragm, it vibrates, altering the distance to the back plate, and thus changing the capacitance. This change in capacitance generates a corresponding electrical charge that reflects the sound wave's characteristics. Once the electrical signal is generated, it will run through the circuit of the condenser microphone. We will have a whole video on different types of condenser microphones and how they sound and why, which I think is pretty fun. So if you find that interesting, tell me down below and I'll do that video a little faster. <laughs> but yes, in going through the circuit, it'll go through an amplification process and then the signal will be sent out into your audio interface, mixing console, and from there there'll be a converter that will take an ADA converter, so analog to digital conversion, at which you can then have your audio into your DAW. So it goes from sound waves into electrical, but inside the condenser microphone, it stays analog. Unless you have a really cool microphone that goes to USB because there are condenser microphones that go to USB, but I'm talking about like classic mics now. You know what I mean? So a little thing I forgot to mention, because the nature of the diaphragm is so thin and that membrane is so thin, it is super sensitive. And so it can replicate all of the details and nuances in a sound much better than a heavy duty moving coil that we find in dynamic microphones. Thus, they have a much wider frequency range and can reproduce sound in usually a lot more detail. Understanding frequency response. The frequency response of a microphone is a critical characteristic that defines how it captures the different frequencies of a sound, typically represented on a graph. The x-axis shows frequency in hertz, and the y shows the microphone's output levels in decibels. A flat frequency response indicates that a microphone reproduces all frequencies uniformly, making it ideal for accurate sound capture. Peaks in the graph indicate that certain frequencies are accentuated, while dips indicate attenuation. For example, a microphone with a boost in the high frequency might be desirable for brightening up vocals or an instrument, while a dip in the low frequencies might help reduce unwanted rumble. Understanding these nuances allows musicians and sound engineers to select microphones based off their recording needs, whether capturing vocals, instruments, 
or ambient sounds. Also, the color of the microphone will change based off of the proximity and the angle. I have a whole demo where we go over all of the color of a microphone based off of how close or how far and how on or off axis it is to a signal source. If that is interesting and you'd like to understand that more, comment down below and I will also do that as a video. I'm gonna do a little poll, I think, because I have a few videos I'm working on now. <laughs> Classic condenser microphone suggestions. Okay, I know. These are expensive, but I wanted to talk about these because they are classic microphones that have very identifiable sonic signatures. You can find clones and or dupes at much more affordable prices, but I figured since a lot of mainstream bigger studios carry these, it's also interesting to talk about very good quality microphones. All right, so number one, we have the Sony C800G, renowned for its pristine sound quality. The C800G excels at capturing high frequency detail, making it a favorite for lead vocals, especially in pop and R&B genres. Its unique tube design adds warm richness to recordings, while its high SPL ensures clarity even at high volumes. Telefunken ELA-M or ELAM 251. This iconic microphone is celebrated for its smooth vintage character and exceptional detail, making it particularly effective in capturing soft and nuanced vocal performances. The ELA-M 251 offers a lot mid-range and airy highs. Perfect for artists seeking a classic, warm, rich sound that has a bit of vintage character to it. Number three, Neumann U47. The Neumann U47 is another legendary microphone known for its warm, full-bodied sound. Its versatility makes it ideal for a variety of applications, from vocals to so many different instruments. The U47's distinct tonal characteristics, including a rich low-end and smooth high frequencies, make it a go to choice for many renowned artists and producers. This microphone is known to be a bit of a workhorse as it works in so many different applications and works on so many different vocal types. By exploring the internal workings, the significance of frequency response, and the characteristics of specific models, you can start to piece together how incredible condenser microphones are and some insight on how to choose a condenser microphone best suited for your next recording. That's it for this video. I hoped it helped. I find these but how does it work videos so fun to do because I love looking at the innards <laughs> of all these amazing pieces of gear and how sound works. I, I find audio engineering and this whole magical world we work in so fascinating. So if you like this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. We come out with new content every week. Also in the comments, there is a poll for what next video you want to see. So go vote. Or if you have other video suggestions, please write it down below. In the description, there are a few cool videos that we've done recently, some demos that are a bit longer that I find really, really fun. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.